we are back here at Ready Solution Center today to talk to you about how to set up breakout I.O. with Forge OS and specifically with the Wago 750 series I.O. system. The Wago 750 series is a great option for setting up additional I.O. that is easily paired with Forge OS. We typically set this up with a Modbus TCP version to connect with Forge. The Wago 750 series has over 500 different types of I.O. modules and field bus couplers, so there's a lot of options to set these up in your robot cell powered by Forge OS. There are a few things that we'll highlight in this video today. We'll show you how to set up the Wago 750 to communicate with Forge. We will configure the unit in our device configuration app. We'll show you how to interface with the I.O. in our device control app. Then we'll show you how to use the I.O. in an actual task to program your robot cell. As always, we have all the CAD and wiring diagrams available at Ready Market. Click the link below in the description to take you right to the info. Prior to setting this module up in Forge, we'll need to set the IP address of the Wago module. You'll need an Ethernet cable to connect your computer to the Wago module. Set the number two dip switch on the module to the on position with all the other dip switches off. This will force the module to a known IP address that we can access through a web browser. Once we can connect to the module through the web browser, we can update the static IP address for our network. Let's take a closer look at how to do that. Start by setting your computer's IP address to communicate directly with the Wago module. Since we set the dip switch of the Wago module so number two is on, what we've done is we've forced the IP address of the Wago module to 192.168.1.2. We want ours to be different, so let's set ours to 192.168.1.10. Once we've set the IP address of the laptop, hit OK and OK again to close out all these menus. Make sure your Ethernet cable is connected directly to the Wago module and open up a web browser and type in the forced IP address of 192.168.1.2. When you do that, that will pop up the Wago configuration software that it will allow us to set the static IP address of the module. You'll need to put in a username and password to get access to the TCP IP section of the module. From the factory, the username is admin all lowercase, and the password is Wago, all lowercase. If you want to change this, you can find the information to do that in the manual that we've uploaded to Ready Market. To change the IP address, head to the left-hand menu, click TCP IP. We want to select static for the IP configuration source at the top, and we want to give it an IP address to communicate with our network. To communicate with Forge, we recommend 172.16.255.100 to not interfere with other devices. Once the IP address is input, click Submit, then go back up to Administration on the left-handed menu and choose Software Reset. Once that is complete, you will need to power off the device, return the number two dip switch to off, then restart the module. To confirm the IP address is set up correctly, reset the IP address of your computer to be on the 172.16.255 network. Open up your web browser and connect to the web browser with the new IP address we've set. We set ours to 172.16.255.100, so we'll type that in and confirm that we can reach the Wago module. Once we've confirmed that we can access the module again, we can disconnect the Ethernet cable from the laptop and connect the Wago module into our network. Now that we have the IP address set for the Wago 750, let's head over to Forge to see how to set it up in our software. The first thing we'll want to do is head over to the device configuration app. Over here at the device configuration app, we can add a new device to set up our Wago device. We have a bunch of different options that pop up here, so we can filter these down by a network device. And because we've chosen the Modbus TCP version, we'll choose Modbus TCP generic device. We can go ahead and give the device a name. This can be anything. We'll call it Wago 750. You can give it a description as well. In this case, uh, we can just call it IO. We can leave the device ID empty. We want to give it an IP address, which we had defined previously as 172.16.255.100. For an update rate, we're going to go ahead and use 50 milliseconds. And now we can add our signals that are going to be tied to our digital I.O. slice. So we'll go ahead and add a new signal. In this case, we're going to use four digital outputs to demonstrate how to use the gripper. So I can go ahead and add four of those. Uh, they are all gonna be digital outputs. You also have the option to create digital inputs here as well as register inputs and outputs depending on what type of slice you have with your Wago device. So we can go ahead and name these sequentially. So it will be zero, 
one, two, and three. And that aligns with the numbers on the actual digital IO slice. And we can also go ahead and name these as well so that we can keep track of them. So this is digital output zero. I'm also gonna name this. Um, we have a, a tool changer on here. We're not actually gonna use the tool changer for this demo. Call it tool unlock for the next one. Choose digital out one tool lock. And then digital output two and three are the ones that are actually tied to our gripper here. So we'll choose digital out two grip close and then digital out three and this is going to be our grip open signal. So one thing to note is we've got these boxes over here for DCP. So if we want to use these in the device control panel or in a task, uh, we want to select the ones that we want to use. So this is useful if you have a whole bunch of registers that you want, but uh, only need to surface a few of those for the end user, depending on the task. In this case, we're actually not going to use the tool changer for the demo. We're just going to use the two grip open and close digital outputs. So we'll only select those. So we can go ahead and hit save. And now this device has shown up in the device configuration tab. Now that we have the device configured, we can go to the device control panel. And from here, we can toggle all of the IO individually from this screen to help set up or troubleshoot our robot cell. Now that we're at the device control screen, we can choose the Wago 750 module that we just set up. And we can see that the two output signals that we just created are here. These are connected to pneumatic solenoids that open and close the shunk gripper. And you can see that as we toggle them, the open and the close, we can control these digital outputs directly from here to operate a device, in this case, the gripper. Let's take a look at how to use the IO in an actual task. Open up the Task Canvas app to get started. We'll create a simple loop here that triggers the output to open and close the gripper. We'll connect it back to the top of the program so it continuously cycles. Let's take a look. Now that we're here in Task Canvas, let's go ahead and create a new task by clicking the Create Task button. We'll give it a name to get started. We'll call this Wago Demo. We're not gonna use the robot in this demo, so we'll just select the Wago 750 device that we want to use, so we'll hit Create Task. So for this task, we're just gonna create a simple loop that opens and closes the gripper just to show the functionality of setting IO. So when we click Add to create a new task block, it gives us options for general task canvas blocks. It surfaces the robot blocks, even though we're not gonna use that, but then the Wago 750. So in this case, the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna set this so that it opens the gripper to start the program. We click Add to link to one of our digital outputs. We select an, out, uh, an existing output and then we're actually gonna to toggle two outputs at the same time. So we're gonna choose grip close, and then we'll choose grip open, so that we set these at the same time. So for grip close, we're gonna select that one as high and grip open is gonna be low. We hit accept. So now we have a task block that opens the gripper. In the task canvas, We'll put in a wait signal, so it gives us options for duration. We'll give it one second, hit accept. So now it's gonna open the gripper, wait one second. Now we're gonna close the gripper. So we'll select the same 
two signals. Hit existing, choose gripper open. Now, in this case, we want the gripper to open, so we're gonna keep grip close low and we'll turn grip open to high. We hit accept. We're gonna add another weight. We're gonna actually use the same one, so we can click edit and we can copy. It gives us an option to paste. We wanna paste it at the end of this. We hit paste and now we've got a task that opens the gripper, waits one second, closes the gripper, waits one second. And now we're gonna connect this back to the top. Connect and we now have a loop that when we hit play, it will run continuously. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this into run mode. We hit reset. We pull up our runtime menu and we can start the task waits one second, it opens and closes, and then it runs continuously. So that's how you start to use IO from a breakout module to function with Task Canvas and build a quick loop program. So that's how we use a Wago 750 series for our breakout IO to integrate with Forge OS. If you have a piece of hardware that you'd like to know how to set up with Forge, let us know. We can feature it on a future how-to video. If you need some help getting started, don't hesitate to reach out. We're happy to help.